good morning first of all i would like to thank mr dinesh for uh, giving this opportunity uh, this presentation is bit different from uh, you know the other presentation happened during the last two days here basically we are uh, attempting to present a methodology to measure the impact of innovation at grassroots which we believe is simple to use simple to understand and simple to perform analysis but maybe a bit difficult in terms of you know organizing the you know the implementation of this particular approach mainly in terms of uh, developing the questionnaire and this uh, whole approach targets you know the farmers as respondents yeah uh, the first day we had a, you know detailed presentation by mr vijay kumar you know trying to you know explain the a large scale implementation of you know, various kinds of innovations with respect to integrated pest management <coughs> organic farming the state of andhra pradesh and he gave some indicators you know which uh, kind of facilitated measurement of success of such kind of initiatives but you know success in terms of uh, number of farmers adopting such practices or some kind of an income we believe you know maybe inadequate to measure the real impact of such interventions and that is kind of a motivation for us to do this now some of the questions i have raised no such kind of innovative innovative interventions or innovation are they limited to successful one time demonstration and just rewarding the innovator or they go beyond that you know in terms of upscaling you know achieving sustainability that is uh, related to the second question what are the evidence of upscaling or replication or at least potential for doing that the third and most important aspect is has such intervention or have such interventions have led to empowerment of individuals groups families you know through various kinds of benefits social economic you know environmental or it could be you know generating any additional income for the family and as usual you know what are their contribution to sustainability and sustainable development and most importantly how this impacts could be measured at least in some kind of a, you know quantitative assessment is there a possibility and basically we are proposing a method called uh, gap analysis i will uh, explain about it uh, in subsequent slides and we implemented this particular approach uh, in two cases of intervention one an integrated pest management <coughs> program uh, you know performed by you know, carried out by a large number of ngos and uh, a network called lisa in tamil nadu and the second one is the experiment kind of through mobile telephony you know information broadcasting you know the basically you know information relevant to farmers as well as uh, you know fishermen and other kinds of uh, rural artisans and uh, this particularly is part of a phd thesis uh, carried out and myself and uh, dr chanakya by a senior employee from ifco and i will be focusing on the uh, ipm aspect in my presentation yeah basically this particular approach tries to you know assess the knowledge empowerment tracking the process starting from you know the practices which are uh, you know farmer centric or individual centric getting disseminated into a larger uh, uh, framework in you know, how they could contribute to empowerment of group of farmers or uh, in a large number of individuals and leading to sustainability and what we typically expect is does this empowerment lead to you know, knowledge skill technology empowered farmers or individuals with the capability to identify problem develop solution and implement them effectively and capable to adopt and adapt various kinds of ipm and uh, organic farming practices take informed decisions you know based on prior knowledge prior experience which we believe you know would facilitate better implementation and better access to benefits 
and create and share knowledge with respect to fellow farmers or uh, you know other individuals and specially get you know social upliftment now these are kind of uh, you know aspects we try to measure the process is something like this database basically means practices technologies which are you know developed by individual farmers through their innovative capabilities which typically end with those farmers without you know other farmers uh, being able to learn from these farmers can we collect them and transform them into some kind of manuals could be documents or could be a video or uh, something like that that getting transformed into information through training or some kind of a farmer feed school or something like that transforming into knowledge which basically we believe you know enables a farmer and builds empowerment within him or herself which again enables as i said informed decision making and that empowerment enables and builds confidence in them to implement such decisions and finally what are the kind of outcomes which are resulting from that kind of an implementation are these outcomes verifiable can we measure them and are they really observable and we believe the gaps exist in every aspect of this transformation you know the manual could be ineffective in providing the effective training the training itself could be ineffective or the enabling process could be ineffective in other words you know that uh, gaps could happen at every stages then what is a gap we define it as a difference between the states of ideal and actual in other words i feel the ideal situation should be a well informed skillful the farmer you know who is capable of doing whatever he wants to do but the actual situation could be far away from that if that is not feasible then it could be expected or desired status versus an actual status or it could be training versus no training you know uh, when we expect such a difference it will naturally lead to presence of gaps in every aspect of this it could be knowledge technology social status gender etc and it is also you know explained and you know, stated as the space between where we are currently and where we want to be with respect to time or uh, status or whatever it could be and gap analysis is basically process of matching and comparing the actual and desired states and identifying the gaps i think i will uh, skip this then what we did exactly with respect to this particular uh, implementation we try to assess the gaps with respect to individual farmers you know with respect to his or her ability to identify something which he normally uses in his uh, farming activity the next level of the farmer's ability in terms of you know what it the particular practice could be used where it could be used the third level of uh, his understanding could be method of use now basically we, the second aspect we call it as familiarity of the practices or the technologies the third aspect is internalization of knowledge you know at this stage you know we may be able to call this particular farmer as an expert similarly we also try to evaluate the group knowledge you know what we believe uh in a typical village atmosphere the individual may not be completely empowered but he or she will have an opportunity to share or to gain from other farmers as a group they may be having better capabilities once you have this you know having individual knowledge as well as group knowledge what are the level of implementation that is the next step we try to assess that one both from the group perspective as well as from the individual perspective then we try to create an experimental setup you know how the trained farmers behave vis-a-vis the non-trained farmers we call them as ipm and non-ipm farmers then we also try to analyze you know 
the various stages of farming you know how the gaps in terms of knowledge or uh, you know in terms of implementation starting from uh, the first stage of soil preparation to finally the sale of the produce and uh, as i said at the beginning we are dealing with uh, the farmers not you know the experts from an industry or the employees from uh, any other organization we cannot use a you know, well structured you know, sc- uh, questioner with scaled variables no we will have language problem and many other things so we replace the questioner with a large collection of materials and practices it's something like in our con- uh, questioner consisted of uh, 65 real life items representing the whole farming process uh, we prefer to call it a, call, uh, call it as questioner in a brief case or more than one brief case is it yeah after the pocket no no no, no. <laughs> there so many items could be you know some of uh, them may be in a bag or in a box and complemented with the uh, real time objects because again we do not claim you know kind of an ownership for this questioner development it was uh, done participatorily by involving the farmers and when we you know were implementing this questionnaire some farmers you know found out some limitations within them then we complemented that with real time objects you know which we found nearby in the nearby farms which again suggested by the farmers yeah as i said this uh, you know approach you know we try to assess the individual knowledge group knowledge and this empowerment leading to the actual implementation with yeah so yeah, within the you know individual knowledge as i explained you know capability to identify familiarity with use and knows how to deploy because identification could be from his memory if he is a you know serious attend or quite attentive in training programs one need not practice to you know identify something but familiarity requires a keen observation of someone else if it is doing or he himself doing but knowing to deploy needs you know significant involvement in terms of implementation yeah, i will skip this you know in where this presentation is available and how do we measure you know in at uh, with respect to identification level when the when we show an object you know, if there is an immediate response we give a score of 1 and we frame few clues along with a uh, practice you know you give a first clue second clue like that you know if the farmer responds with the help of clues then he gets a score of 2 if it does not identify 3 similarly you know we have uh, used uh, this kind of scoring mechanism yeah if uh, you know the response is 1 the conclusion is there is no gap in the with respect to the knowledge or the information acquired by the farmer if two it's kind of a medium level gap and three is large gap now there are some uh, patterns as i said 53 items for uh, assessing the individual and um, i think we went up to 65 items to assess the group knowledge and uh, you know all this scores were uh, been tabulated and we created an excel uh, sheet which read is readily transforms the input data into such kind of graphs and basically <coughs> the graph gives you you know percentage knowledge acquired by the individual farmers and the gap and since our priority was the gap not the knowledge per se you can you know again any initiatives or interventions need to happen to minimize the gap we basically turn down the graph and i know we basically projected the gap aspect and this particular uh, graph you know shows you know the gaps prevailing among farmers across the different uh, stages of farming and we can uh, see you know though the program was focusing on integrated pest management the gap was highest with respect to pest but this is one kind of an example with the, you know different sort of set of farmers we got uh, different kind of results how much more time you exhausted yeah 
and this is kind of an uh, you know picture showing uh, farmer wise gaps you can see some farmers you know who had you know because of their uh, interest willingness they have you know achieved a significant reduction in gap but there are other farmers and uh, again we compared in you know, ipm farmers versus uh, non ipm farmers and you can see the difference you know the training has played a major role and uh, this is interesting you know individual knowledge versus group knowledge you know though individually there are farmers you know with the uh, high percentage of gap as a group if the function you know the knowledge levels increases substantially and the gap reduces almost to <coughs> zero and uh, this is basically you know comparing you know knowledge versus implementation in this particular case you know it uh, almost uh, reflects their uh, extent of knowledge you know implementation also they are reasonably good you know there are no there is no drastic difference between the knowledge acquisition and the implementation typically you know hypothetically we expect the implementation to be relatively you know weak with respect to the knowledge acquisition process is just one more uh, example of you know men versus women and uh, i don't want to elaborate on this you know because this is one of huh? sample size difference it, it could be uh, sample size or one of the instances in you know, some other village you know where you know the self help groups are uh, quite influential we have seen the reverse of this happening could we reserve the yeah. enthusiasm <laughs> yeah yeah this is the conclusion uh, we basically found you know simple to administer effective in terms of data capture when uh, we are uh, you know targeting uninformed to a large extent uh, illiterate farmers illiterate means for these kind of questionnaires what uh, typically we social scientists uh, use and uh, you know farmers when we administered they found it you know to be useful for retraining you know as a manual for training the farmers this is one more advantage uh, they felt okay thank you